This is a really cool job, you guys, and this is my favorite part. This is the wrap up. This is where you get to see everything come together. And this yard had a really unique set of challenges that we had to face on it, and I'll tell you about that in just a few moments. you guys if you're just tuning in let's get you caught up real fast what's going on with this project is the city's water directly dumped right off from the street and flooded out my customers backyard on top of that they have two storm sewer inlets that exit outlets technically that dump the water that comes pipes underground directly into their yard leaving these guys with a really big mess now one of the questions that came up is why don't we just extend these pipes all the way down to the pond and we would love to, but we're never allowed to technically connect into the city's system. If we do want to connect into the city system, it just requires more permits. It requires more inspections. It requires time and expense. And these guys had had enough and we needed to come up with a solution to give these guys a backyard as quickly as possible. Now we've had a full day of rain yesterday and last night, and I'm out here just checking on the system. And you can see we don't even have any water rivulets. Well, a little bit right there, okay? But I believe that's more than likely just contained from right within the property. Because if it was coming off the street or overflowing the system, this would be a complete washout. One of the things that you'll notice is we're using pretty massive rocks to do this. And the reason we're using these bigger rocks is it resists movement in heavier storms. So if this thing just has a massive water coming out, we don't have to worry that any of this wa any of this material, any of these boulders are going to end up down in the pond. Now in a little bit, you're going to see in the video where Zach is actually hand placing these rocks. And Alex is over here grading. And it's the worst of all possible scenarios because Alex almost hits Zach without even knowing it. And one of the things that we see in the construction industry is the more competent the equipment operator, the more complacent the laborers get. And what that basically means is they get very comfortable around a good equipment operator and they overestimate the skills of the equipment operator with their own lives. They put themselves in situations that can be very dangerous and you're going to see it. What should have happened in this case is if Alex did have to back drag this way, because sometimes when you're grading, you've got to go in one direction, then you got to change directions. Zach should have just not been working in this zone at all until Alex could turn the machine physically around and be facing Zach. And then every time Alex and the skid loader would come forward, he needs to make eye contact with the laborer in front of him. And I know that's asking a lot, that also means that every single night, Zach gets to go home and see his five kids. So, safety first. That's this project. Now let's just start building this dry creek bed and show you guys the process of how we do it. Hope that answered a few of your questions.
we're creating is a swale. And what a swale is, is it's just an area that we intentionally direct the water to go into. that battery powered stuff yeah that's nice but when your battery's dead what are you gonna do that's why i like it the good old-fashioned and hand pump grease gun you don't have to worry about no batteries nothing breaking other than your tube of grease and that's about it don't let zach fool you he's also using a lock and lube and those things work like miracles especially when you use a uh uh I think that's a is that that's not a pistol grip that's a lever pump grease gun he's using a pistol grip at least allows you to pump it with one hand and to hold it on but this way works too Now that we have finished digging out this swale, we're gonna lay out fabric, and then we're waiting on John to get here with, uh, I think three, four inch river rock. And then we're gonna spread that over the fabric that's gonna be laid out. So now this is a permeable, heavy duty woven fabric.
So Zach is stapling the fabric into the soil. That way it doesn't move as we're building the dry creek bed. Do you guys know why he's dumping directly from the truck into the bucket? What the point of that is? to go get the hydro bucket i'm gonna rake all this along here and in front of the wall just kind of button it up make it all look nice to, you know, so just sit back and enjoy so this yard that you see zach working on that basically all tapered right down to the pond so we left we brought in structural fill to level out that backyard built the boulder retaining wall and now we're going to top dress the grade with this nice pulverized black dirt. For those of you who don't know and don't work in the construction industry, you have to clean out your tracks on your machines before you go down the road. Otherwise, the DOT gives you a very, very big fine. And also, you don't want rocks coming flying up. I don't One of the things that we do is we always load trailer with two guys. Of course, the one in the machine, but then the second guy, which is typically Johnny, since this is usually his load, and as the truck driver, technically he's responsible to make sure that everything that's put onto his trailer is done to his satisfaction because once he leaves with it, he becomes responsible for the load. So we always make sure that as we're putting the equipment on the trailer that he has final walk around and he's good with everything but also we rely on him as we're putting it on the trailer to make sure that we don't have a piece of equipment go over or that we stay in balance. And so Johnny's job is to make sure that these things get safely from one job site to the next job site. Laborers sometimes just get too comfortable around the equipment, especially when they know it's in the hands of a capable operator, and that's not okay. In fact, you're gonna see here in a moment where Zach is just a little too comfortable with Alex going forward and backward, not realizing that Zach is completely in Alex's blind spot. Now 
Kneeling down behind an operating skid loader is never a good idea. The best case way they could do this possible job is for the skid loader operator to turn around and make sure that he makes eye contact with the laborer every single pass, forward and backward. Well, we've wrapped up Alex's boulder wall. Oh, we've put in the rip wrap, that riverbed, and it created out the yard, brought in some black dirt, hydro bucketed it, it, it filled in along the front of the wall, the way everything slopes away. Yeah, yeah. I think it turned out pretty good. First ever boulder wall I've ever built, so I think it turned out pretty good. The yard used to be basically to where the bottom of the boulder wall is, it is sloping down from the house. And now you can see we've actually given them back a backyard. And, and then, now he can do whatever he wants with it. He just needs to be a little seated, a little watering. <laughs> Hopefully it won't flood out anymore here because he had a big old trench like right through the middle, right about here. Here. Here going out because every time him it flooded it, from the storm drains, because he has tubes coming into his backyard, it, it would just flood out his whole backyard and he wouldn't have a backyard. So we put the swale in, fabric down, on river rock. Now hopefully it shouldn't flood out his backyard. And you should have it for many years to come. Coming down the pipeline, you guys, we've got a brutal review. Six month update on Hustler mowers. And of course, it wouldn't be a true dirt monkey style video if we didn't torture something. And on this one, it happens to be the Hustler mowers that I bought this spring. We use them all season long. And of course, we've closed them out at the end of the year by taking them into some really extremely brutal conditions and giving you an update on how they hold up over the course of the season. And that's all we got for you on this one. So make sure you hit that subscribe button and I see you guys hitting that like button. And you know what? Thank you because that really does go a long way. Hope you enjoyed this series. There is one more video coming out. This one is gonna be a surprise. It's gonna be the wrap up to all of these series coming out. It's called the construction time lapse. Hopefully you guys will enjoy that. God bless, go get them you guys. And we'll see you on another one.